Captain's log, start date 1974. On board the Enterprise, Spock is being logical, Captain Kirk is being smug, the women are in miniskirts, and everybody's Turkish. Is it some kind of mirror universe, or just another case of deja vu? Gene Roddenberry's 1966 TV series Star Trek might be the most influential science fiction show in history. It spawned six spin-off series, 13 feature films, hundreds of books, and countless imitators. But it wasn't until 1973 that the show finally made its way to Turkish television. And that's when filmmaker Hulki Sonner decided to boldly go where no Turk had gone before. Tourist Ermer Uzay Yolunda is a nearly beat-for-beat -beat remake of the Star Trek episode The Man Trap, the first to air on NBC in 1966. The Enterprise is sent to a remote planet home to archaeologist Dr. Crater and a murderous, shape-shifting alien. Not a single character name has been changed for the Turkish version, and the look of the Enterprise, the uniforms, the greenhouse, the monster, even the classic Star Trek screen shake are all slavishly duplicated. What changes there are are almost exclusively minor. Spock wears a yellow uniform, Scotty wears green, Yeoman Rand is now a lieutenant, and Spock replaces Kirk on the away team. Otherwise, it's virtually identical. Well, except for one thing. The Enterprise has a new crew member, a Turkish tramp named Ermer the Tourist. Ermer was a popular character from a series of Turkish comedies. A lower-class fish-out-of-water and vagabond, he offered humorous observations about the people and customs he encountered. But he's never encountered anything as strange as this. Dr. Crater, in order to protect the alien, transports a very confused Ermer from contemporary Turkey and presents him to the Enterprise crew as the unknown murderer. Once on board the ship, Ermer's hijinks cause all manner of trouble. He particularly gets on the nerves of Mr. Spock, whose pointed ears and illogical outlook Ermer simply cannot understand. <laughs> Through Ermer, this Turkish Star Trek is transformed from a straightforward imitation into a playful commentary on the material. To fill out a feature-length runtime, the film also borrows elements from other Star Trek episodes, including androids from What Are Little Girls Made Of and I, Mud, and the fight between Kirk and Spock from A Mock Time. But what's striking about the Turkish remake is just how comparable its production values are to the original. The reason is that unlike major Hollywood productions, both American television and Turkish features were forced to be shot quickly and cheaply. American TV budgets were small. Therefore, to save time and manpower, shows like Star Trek were often shot on sound stages. This gave the crew greater control over the environment, but the sets were relatively small and artificial. In Turkey, where there were no major studio facilities, the best way to contain costs was to shoot on location. It avoided the need to build sets, and since Turkish films were shot without sound and dubbed over later, there was no need to worry about ambient noise. Therefore, much of tourist Ermer Uzay Yolunda was shot among actual ruins, specifically Ephesus, home to one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. This gives the film a much grander scale than an American TV budget would have allowed. The Turks also had a secret weapon for saving time and valuable film stock, the front shot. Unlike the way Hollywood typically shoots dialogue scenes, film one side of a conversation, then reposition the camera and shoot it again from the opposite angle, a front shot contains both actors and positions them facing the camera rather than each other. That way the entire sequence can be recorded in one take, with half the amount of film. The net result of all of this is that, with the exception of its somewhat crude optical effects, the film looks nearly as expensive as its American counterpart. Indeed, tourist Umer Uzay Yolunda is zany, fun, and absolutely Star Trek. It's swingin' 60s sci-fi with a Turkish sense of humor. If you're interested in learning more about the film, I highly recommend my colleague Ian Robert Smith's essay, Beam Me Up, Umer, which was a major influence during the writing of this episode. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, live long and, well, you know. <laughs>